Hello, psychology students. This is Mrs. Politsky, and I have notes for Module 7, The Brain. And we're going to begin today uh, by talking a little bit about uh, the brain itself and, and some of the, uh, the structures. And in the course of this chapter or this module, uh, there are going to be five different parts to this. And so this is just part one. So let's begin. The brain, for the most part, is the most important part of the central nervous system. And it weighs roughly three pounds. Uh, when we talk about the differences between males and females, uh, the male brain does weigh just slightly more at 48 ounces compared to the female brain at roughly 44 ounces. Uh, don't assume that a heavier brain necessarily equates a smarter person. Uh, because of the fact that uh, when we talk about individuals who have had um, certain developmental disabilities, for example, Down syndrome, uh, the brains of, of individuals with Down syndrome typically are bigger and they may weigh more, uh, but that does not necessarily equate to uh, intelligence. So this is based on the fact that men weigh more than females, and not the fact that they're more intelligent than females. Uh, brain size isn't necessarily a true measure of intelligence. So the hindbrain. Uh, the hindbrain, for the most part, uh, controls the vital functions, and part of that is the medulla. Uh, the medulla is right at the, the top of the spinal cord, and it controls our vitals. It's controlling our heartbeat, our breathing, and our blood pressure. If someone would have damage to the medulla, you know, it would be, for the most part, the end of their life, uh, because these are the vitals that keep us alive on a day-to-day -day basis. Near the medulla uh, is, and just a little bit above that, are the pons. And the pons, for the most part, are a group of fibers that connect the brain to the spinal cord. The pons have a little bit to do with our um, states of sleep, uh, and for the most part, if there's damage to that, it may cause problems with someone's ability to sleep. And then not far from the, the spinal cord and the pons is something known as the cerebellum. Uh, the cerebellum is kind of nicknamed the little brain, and it regulates posture, balance, and muscular activity. So your ability to walk, your ability to balance yourself on a bicycle, all of that is controlled by the, the cerebellum. And it also um, is responsible for things like, you know, helping us remember like certain routine uh, steps. So for example, in the morning, if you um, have a certain routine when you get up and get out of bed and, and the routine that you follow every morning, part of that memory is laid within the cerebellum. All right, aside from the hindbrain, we have the midbrain. And the midbrain uh, contains the reticular formation. Uh, on our diagram below here, okay, right here, this little green line, uh, is supposed to illustrate the reticular formation. Um, for the most part, it does contain some, you know, it kind of works with the pons and the medulla, but it's involved uh, with helping us stay awake, arousal for the most part. It controls the amount of tension in the muscles. If this is destroyed, uh, coma will result. And then finally, uh, we have the brainstem, which is basically, you know, some of these parts that we've already talked about, uh, talking about the medulla, the pons, reticular formation in the cerebellum. The forebrain. Forebrain is made up of the limbic system, and the limbic system contains uh, three main structures of the brain that you see kind of labeled in our diagram below. Uh, the first one is our amygdala. Uh, the amygdala is uh, kind of a Greek name. It's, it's basically based on the shape of the amygdala. Um, it's Greek for almond. And for the most part, it does kind of have that almond shape if you look at your diagram below here. But it inhibits, or excuse me, it, it excites negative emotions. So your emotions of anger and rage and aggression uh, are all part of that. If there would be damage to the amygdala, then that part of our emotional cycle becomes very placid. In other words, you wouldn't be able to show anger or rage or be aggressive. 
The third item here is our septal area. Uh, this inhibits negative emotions. If destroyed, it would be um, unable to control negative emotions. So it, for the most part, it would allow you to cry and, and, and be uh, emotionally um, overcome. And then your fourth item here is your hypothalamus. Uh, the hypothalamus, for the most part, is just over the top of the brain stem, as you can see labeled in both diagrams. Uh, in the center of the core of the brain is where it's located and has a major impact on a lot of our bodily functions. Uh, the other day we talked about kind of the prefix hypo, meaning like hypodermic, because it's going to be testing our blood and it helps us understand when we're hungry or thirsty. Uh, it's involved in sexual activity. It's also involved with determining body temperature, hormone regulation, reproduction, aggression, immune system responses, and our emotional expression. Thank you very much.